Hey guys, we just shot a video on Facebook Live on how to open and close jump rings and the difference between jump rings and split rings. And we go into detail on which tools to use. You gotta have the right tools. So we talk about gauge, size, when to use what jump ring, how to get it really, really close shut. That's the main topic today. And just keep in mind that this was shot live on Facebook. So we are talking to customers and answering questions, but we've edited it a little bit here for you to archive it. So come check it out. Let's close those jump rings. So what we've got here is some pliers and some jump rings and a couple of pendants that are stamped. And first off, what is jump rings? A jump ring is this circular, you know, guy made of wire. And they're made by making a wire coil that's then cut. So that's why when you receive your jump rings, they're slightly, let me zoom in. Open. Slightly open, that's right because they were just cut from a coil. And you can do it with uh, pliers or cutters, you can do it with a saw or a jump ring maker. Or you can buy them ready-made, which um, I do because I'm lazy. Me too, I But like we that. could make them, we could. We have the technology. So you use jump rings to attach things to a chain, like to attach this to the chain, you need to have something. Um, you can use them to make chain mail. So chain mail is all made from jump rings. So anybody that is, Doing chain mail is a jump ring pro, and a jump ring opener and closer pro. So in that class, Colin teaches a very basic chain, but she spends the first couple steps talking about how to properly and open, open and close a jump ring. So that's a super good class to check out to practice this. So you want to make sure that you are using a flat jaw plier to open and close them. You never want to use a round nose plier because it will mar up the side of your ring. Uh, the dynamics of how a round nose come together, they come together at one little tiny point where they actually touch and that will mar it. But if you hold it flat within a flat nose or a chain nose or a bent chain nose, um, it shouldn't mar it up. One thing on that, if it is marring it up, you might be either squeezing too hard or you're using a plier that has sharp edges. So if you have a, um, let's just say very, very, very inexpensive plier, <laughs> you might have some sharp edges and those edges here and here will dig into your jump rings or your wire work. So if that's something that's happening, you can either upgrade your pliers or maybe take a file, a heavy file and just kind of go at the jaw and go slightly round like that. You don't want to turn them into round nose, but just take that edge off. Make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay. So I just want to show, I mean, I have, <laughs> I grabbed like a huge stack of pliers here because I have Holy them. Moly. I know it's crazy. I mean, look at this one. I've had this one for, I don't know, 15 years. Well loved. It's a little rusty on the outside, but not, not rough. It's just color. I don't care. But I just want to show you that you can use bent chain nose, which is, these are two different types. This is the German chain nose. It's a um, reasonably priced chain nose or plier, we have round nose, chain nose, and bent, and I really like it, nice ergonomic handle. Um, it's about half the cost, I believe, of the Lindstrom's. This is one of their bent chain nose. Um, you can use regular chain nose. Here's a Lindstrom, here's a Tronix. I mean, as far as opening and closing jump rings, you just need to make sure you have a comfortable, strong, not marring plier. So I'm not gonna tell you which one to buy over the other one, right? But the really super cool thing is that, look, I'm already making a mess. Lindstrom just came out with these stubby pliers and they are made specifically for opening and closing jump rings. And they've got tiny jaws. This looks like a cutter, but it's not. It's a chain nose. It really does look like a cutter. Yeah. But what's cool is you can grab, you can grab this like either at this angle where you want to be able to see a lot or at this angle, what, whichever you want, this is this is a chain nose inside. It's flat jaws. That's awesome. And then this is just a stubby, fat, um, flat nose. Which so are, that gives you more control, I would imagine. Yeah, totally. So the longer the plier, the weaker it is out at the tip. And you can see there's adjustable pins here. I always adjust them. So something like this, if you're trying to do manipulate wire or open some really big jump rings out here, you're going to have to squeeze harder and it's going to be harder to control it. That may end up with marring your metal or, you know, just not successfully able to do it. So that's why I really 
for opening and closing jump rings, I really prefer a short one. Mm -hmm. And these are short. So mm -hmm. the beauty of these is if you're doing um, opening and closing a jump ring or doing chain mail of like 14 gauge or 12 gauge, something huge like that, these guys are going to uh, take control of that super easily. I would imagine it would hurt. Like your wrists wouldn't be so sore too if you're doing like chain mail or something like that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And we, Colin tested these. She's our chain mail gal. And she really likes them, especially because Lindstrom are really light. And when you're doing production work and you're constantly picking up and putting down pliers, having them be light is, is a pretty significant difference. Now, if you're just doing it to put a jump ring on a pendant, that may not matter to you. Um, all right. So let's just, these guys are great, but I almost always use chain nose and flat nose just because I haven't purchased the other ones yet. And because mm -hmm. these are always on my bench. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use that to show you guys. Super basic. Let's just talk about opening and closing a jump ring. I'm going to pretend that my hand, we can do the jump ring ballet like Kate says. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pretend that this is a jump ring. Okay. And you don't want to ever open it this way. No. Because likely, <laughs> no way. Because likely when you go to like push it back, it'll be distorted or it'll be long or something like that. You want to open it this way mm -hmm. and put it back that way. So let me turn the angle here. So this way. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll show you that now. Um, I didn't grab oval jump rings. We talked about that it's based on grabbing them, but we can talk about those. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to hold my jump ring flat within my pliers. Let me see if I can get closer. Oop, oh my. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Nice and clear. Yeah, it's good. I don't want to hold it like this mm -hmm. because I won't have as much control and it's likely going to just bend right there. When you are, when you, if I hold it like this and then brace it like this or like this, mm -hmm. the only place the metal can move is where it's exposed. Mm -hmm. So then you don't run the risk of yes, opening and closing it properly, but the side of your wire gets kind of wonky. Any questions come up so far? Mm -mm, not so far. Lots of people think they need to upgrade their tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It makes a pretty big difference. Mm -hmm. Um, and Lindstrom, I always, I've always said, I've never met someone that said, Ooh, I wish I never bought those. That's <laughs> you know right. I mean? Yeah. And Tronics too. They're fantastic. Tronics, we know them personally and they're made here in the United States and they're great. Um, okay. So I hold it flat on one side mm -hmm. and depending on my mood, I'll either hold it like this or like this, but for this, let's do this and I'm just going to rock it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's nice and open. Mm -hmm. Only open it as much as you need to put whatever it is you're putting in, in there mm -hmm. like this. I didn't quite open it big enough. So I'm going to go a little bit more. Okay. I guess I didn't. Let the thing dangle, whether it be chain or a blank. And then I'm going to have to switch the way that I hold it and now rock it back. Now, let me tell you a little trick here. Notice how I'm wiggling it as I rock it back. At mm -hmm. the same time, I'm taking my pliers and pushing them towards each other as I rock it back and forth just to close it to the teeniest little gap. Um, but it also work hardens the wire right here by work, rocking it back and forth and it will really set it in place. So rock it back and forth. As I'm pushing together, you can feel it sort of click if the edges hit, which is good. Mm -hmm. And then just make sure that you've got it nice and closed. Look at it from this angle. And it's not. Let me let the focus deal here. Being this close, it's a little testy. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah, not well closed. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go back in. And will we kind of hear it click too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. I mean, the goal is that if you were to look at this ring, sorry, bad, bad focus situation. I'm going to back out a little. If you were to look at this ring and you can't find the seam, mm -hmm. well, then you did a good job. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue is if there's any gap there and you're using, um, say, a blank or something that's 24 gauge, that's really, really thin and it could fall right out mm -hmm. or a chain link could fall right out. And that's sad. Right. right. And that's that bad news. what it asks. I think it's an 18 gauge blank. Yeah. This is aluminum. So this one's 18 gauge and the jump ring I just used, I believe is a four millimeter 18 gauge. So let's talk about that. When you look at sizes of jump rings, um, 
the reference, the numbers that you're going to see is gauge, which means the wire used to make the jump ring, and diameter, and it's inner diameter. So if I say four millimeter inner diameter ring, the inside of that loop is four millimeters. The reason they go by that is because that's the size of the mandrel they use to make the jump ring, and so it's very accurate. You know, if you used a four millimeter mandrel to make a jump ring out of 22 gauge and then a jump ring out of 18 gauge, you'd still call it four millimeter because that's the size inside. Mm -hmm. Where you can imagine with different size wires, it would be different if you measure it from the outside. That Does makes that sense. make sense? So yeah. it's just easier to reference that way. In the written product guides, we have a little guide about jump rings and when to choose what size mm -hmm. for what pendant. As far as that goes, I think everybody kind of has their favorite. Do you have a favorite size? I do. I think, I mean, I like a four millimeter. Yeah, me too. Um, I think a three and a half is nice too, but four millimeter seems to be pretty universal. Uh, I like 18 gauge. That also seems universal. I think if I'm doing something, uh, something heavier, a 16 gauge, but four millimeter, 18 gauge. The other thing I, I kind of like doing sometimes just for the look of it is doing two jump rings. Like I all punch a larger hole. Oh, I love that idea. Like a two millimeter hole with a power punch or with your screw down punch. And then you can actually just put two 18 yeah. gauge in there and it looks really pretty. Like it looks yeah, like, I'd show like part it, of the design. I don't think we can. No, I don't think you can do it on that, that hole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But now something smaller like this, I would never use a jump ring smaller than 20 gauge. I think you just lose too much strength as you get smaller. So I'm okay with like a three millimeter, 20 mm -hmm. gauge or or anything close to that to, to be nice and strong there. So let's, here, let's use a different plier this time. What's nice. Oh, Kimberly had mentioned that she likes oval shape and we also do enjoy the oval shape as well. Yeah, we love it. And, um, I wonder if I have, well, I messed up. I didn't grab any, but we'll talk about oval in a second. So the other tool that you can use is the bent chain nose. And it's nice because you can hold it as sturdy as I did with the chain nose, mm -hmm. except you have, um, more, of a visual because it's not hiding it as much. Right. So you could go at this angle, give it a little open, toss it on here. And let's say you wanted to also attach it to a chain. So it's not cruising around the chain, but staying set. Mm -hmm. Then you would do that here. Actually, I don't know if this we'll chain through. will through. There's, there's your next lesson. You got to pick a jump ring that'll fit through your chain. I just grabbed one. And, um, oh yeah, and that's kind of a thick chain, the Rollo. Yeah, it is. So we'd have to probably bump down to 20 gauge. Let's see, I think it, there we go. Oh yeah. It's a little tight. So I probably wouldn't use this. I mean, it's in there. I could put it on, dangle it, but if things are really tight, you get less movement. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you would just toss it on there, close it. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, Again, go to that product video about opening and closing jump rings and just watch it over and over again. Mm -hmm. This is a very important technique. Now, split rings are a little bit different. They loop around and around just like a keychain ring. And if you're like someone like me that doesn't care about their nails, you can use your nail to open it mm -hmm. and then toss your thing in. Or we have split ring opening pliers where I would get it a little closer to the gap. And then it opens and well, then you handy. put it on whatever you're putting it on. But let's talk about the oval jump rings. So instead of a jump ring where it comes around, it has a gap here. An oval jump ring is shaped like this and the gap is on the side. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing about this is because of the way gravity works, your pendant will hang low, your chain will be here, and the gap will always be on the side. I mean, sure, it'll flip around, but as it rests, it will be on the side. So there's, if there's any opening whatsoever, you're less likely to lose it. I actually personally like the way it looks better as well. It sits kind of flatter on your chest if you're using it for a, um, a pendant. Oh, I never thought about it like that, yeah. but I do like knowing that the seam is rarely rubbing against the pendant or the chain. Like mm -hmm. it, it kind of gives you a, a feeling of comfort that you're not, you're definitely not going to lose it. Oh, one more thing I want to mention is yes, strength of the metal is an issue, but the bigger the jump ring gets, the weaker it is because mm -hmm. it's easier to pull open. So that's why sometimes you might make the choice to go with four millimeter rather than a six millimeter. Or if your pendant was big, you wanted to go with six millimeter, you need to bump up the gauge to like 16 gauge mm -hmm. or even 14 gauge. Also consider the metal. So aluminum is softer, mm -hmm. but the people we get the aluminum from, they harden the jump rings. So they're pretty stiff. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're making it yourself, consider that. Um, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And, and also you're going to, I know in your head, people want to go as small as they can go. 
but you don't want to go so small that your pendant is rubbing up against the jump ring. Like you want it to have movement. Like I know we should show you for a second the dangle. Switch on earrings. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I also feel like if it's that's that's something that's going to rub against uh, the seam if it's too tight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, someone had asked about they had a problem using the split ring tool. It always ended up scratching their blanks. Have you ever had a problem with that? Yeah, I mean the issue with that is the split ring only opens so much, and as the blank pulls through, it's going to scratch it. Or you have to try to line it. Sometimes people put like some thick tape on it to try to avoid that. Or you got to get your split ring way more open as you pull it through. Also, take a look at the way that you're pulling it through. There's a chance that you could be pulling it um, by f- or flip your j- flip your pendant as you put it on, and then if there is a slight scratch, it will be on the back. But that is a drawback, um, I think. And, I, and, I, and likely you were using aluminum, I assume, because um, that scratches really easily. But that is a drawback of split rings. You got to get them really open and very carefully pull it around. It's great if you can get the side part to pull around rather than just pulling it from the face. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense, that would help. Well, and Pat had said, um, what is it that prevents the split ring from spreading too wide? And to be honest, the reason that I don't use split rings, well, I haven't used it with the tool though, is because I have done it with my finger and I do end up them pulling it apart too wide and then it's hard to get it back again. But I do know that the tool will help you so that it won't split too wide and then you'll be able to come back. I'm surprised to hear that because split rings are made really bouncy. Like I could pull that thing like this and it would go right back. Like I've never, Mm. I've never had that happen. You didn't buy your split rings at Beach Vacation. No, I'm just kidding. It is a concern. I mean, it makes sense. You've had that happen. I've never seen it, but I guess don't open it so big or make sure you're using a really well-made split ring. Or use the plier. I mean, the, the split ring plier would definitely help. Right, yeah. Cause you or just use a jump ring. <laughs> yeah, or two <laughs> jump rings. So back to your two question rings, yes. why is that stronger, right? Wasn't that the initial question? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's because it's doubled. You know, so if you were to pull open a jump ring, to pull open a split ring, you're going to have to pull two coils open. Mm-hmm. And that's just, I mean, just based on the dynamics of it, it's very unlikely. Unless you're really strong. <laughs> that's true. But I do like the idea that if any part of you is worried, and I see on so many designs and it's beautiful, do a larger hole, do a two millimeter hole, and then use two 18 gauge mm-hmm. jump rings. And it just, it looks purposeful and so pretty. I do. I love that look. I much prefer it, especially if you oxidize, because then you get a little dark in between. It looks and nice. if your jump rings are very, very close tight, you won't see that seam, so it won't look cheesy. True. Right? Yeah. And, or you can use the oval, two of the oval, and then it, yeah. you won't see it at mm-hmm. all. 